Hey, what's up guys? So today we're gonna to be taking an in-depth look at my uh, spreadsheet, specifically the summary page here. And so if we just dive right in and start over here on the left side, I list the ticker symbol for all the companies. Um, and then this next column here is the company name. And I'm using a Google Finance function here to pull the name. So Google Finance is a super helpful function for uh, stock data. And so the first parameter is just the ticker symbol of the company here. And then the second parameter is some sort of uh, keyword. It could be a multitude of things such as price or name or whatever. There's a bunch of, if you go on the Google Docs support page, you can look at all the uh, different keywords you could use and how you could use them. And then the next attributes are the uh, dates. You can have like a start date and end date and then an interval uh, so you can get uh, a bunch of data instead of just one piece of data you can get uh, data over time so for this application I'm just using the name uh, so I just give it the ticker and then I pass name in print uh, in quotation marks there so the next thing I'm doing here is I'm putting in the sector and I use that so I can display the holdings uh, by sector and the portfolio weighting uh, later on and I'm using a data validation here. So if you go to data and then data validation, you can uh, create a drop down list by checking this and then by selecting list of items and then putting a list in here, then you have a drop down list. So when you go to add a new company, then you just have that drop down list and you choose one of these and it's really easy. Um, and then next I have the shares and I'm getting the shares from the transactions tab here and I'm using a sum if function. So I'm basically looking at all the tickers in the transactions tab, and then I'm comparing it to this ticker. And then if it's the same, then I'm adding up the uh, share n number from the transactions tab. And then I'm also subtracting the cells, but I don't really use that that much. Um, and continuing on, uh, just another Google Finance function to get the price here and then another Google Finance function to get the change just pass in change um, and also here I'm using some conditional formatting so we can take a look at that uh, if you go under format and conditional formatting basically I'm saying if the value is greater than zero then it's going to be green and then if it's less than zero then it's going to be red uh, so that just helps me quickly visualize how each position is doing throughout the day um, and this is the equity change, which I just get by taking the price, or sorry, the number of shares I have, and then multiplying it by the day change. So that's my total equity change. Um, and then this next column is a spark line. And so how this works is it basically takes a bunch of data, and then it's going to just make a graph out of that. So I'm getting the data from Google Finance. Looking, I'm looking at the price and then I'm passing in the date a year ago and then the date today um, with these today functions and then I'm saying I want to look at the price every single week so it's going to give me 52 prices there and then it's going to all plot those out on a little graph to visualize it and then I'm putting the color uh, in relation to an if statement based on if the price is greater today or greater a year ago then it's either red or green. Um, so that's a little bit complicated, but uh, I tried to do as best as I could explaining it. So hopefully that helps. And then this one is for this column is for the annual dividend. And I'm using an import HTML function and I'm scraping from Finviz. Um, so basically, what import HTML does is you take a website URL here, and then that's your first parameter and then you pass in either table or list based on whether you want it to look at an HTML table or an HTML list. And then the last parameter is just the number of that in the page. So for this example, it would be looking at the fourth table on that URL. So in my example, I'm looking at the 11th table on this URL. Um, and then I'm also using the index function so I can look at the second column and the seventh row down, all right? And I'm also using this rejects extract 
and what this is doing is it's just parsing out the data so it's more clean because normally when it comes in it comes in with these two little stars around it and then I can't use it really to do anything with uh, so that's just a little bit way to clean it up um, and then the dividend yield that's just the annual dividend divided by the share price so that's pretty straightforward uh, the yield on cost is the dividend divided by my average cost that I bought it at. Uh, so that's just a good way to look at um, basically how the dividend is compared to where you bought it at. Um, and then a, another condition I have here is if the yield on cost is greater than the dividend yield, then I make it green, and if not, I make it red. Um, so that's just an easy way for me to look at how my positions are doing. And then this next column is annual dividend paid, and that's just the dividend, the annual dividend times the number of shares. So um, that just is how much dividends I'm receiving, and then I sum that up here at the bottom. All right. Uh, this next column is for equity, and that's basically just the price times the uh, number of shares. So that's just how much I have invested in that company. And then moving along here, this next is just the percentage of the portfolio. So it's just the uh, equity in this one company divided by the total equity, which is down here, the total amount I have invested. All right, and then this dividend frequency, this I just input manually, and I use it to calculate this next value here. Uh, so this next value is the PSR, which is called the Pierre Sustainability Ratio, and uh, it's kind of a fun metric. It was uh, basically created by this guy in the investment community I know a little bit, his name's Pierre. Uh, he has a YouTube channel called PK Investing. Uh, he does a lot of interesting stuff and he invests in Tesla, which is pretty cool. He has a pretty cool method of doing that. So go ho over there and check him out definitely if you're interested in that. Um, but what he does or what this uh, metric is, is it basically is telling you how many shares of a company it will buy every time it pays you a dividend. So for this example, every time it pays an annual dividend of 72 cents, and so that's why I put the dividend frequency here. So I do the annual dividend divided by the dividend frequency. So in this instance, that's 18 cents per payout. And then you divide it again by the price to get the number of shares you can buy. So with one share I would get 18 cents which is like 1.7 percent of a share um, so that's kind of fun it's not really like useful for analyzing anything but it's just fun to look at and fun to see you go up and then this is the weighted PSR which is just a PSR times the equity percentage and then I'm using that to add all these up and get an average weighted PSR for my total portfolio so this next column is the years of increasing dividends, and uh, these are manually inputted as well. Uh, in the future, I might try to find a way to scrape them off the internet somewhere, but at the moment, I haven't been able to figure that out, so I just put them in manually, and then I have an average years, which is just the number multiplied the, by the percentage of my portfolio, and then I add all that up to get the average weighted years of increasing dividends for my whole portfolio. So that's 25, which is pretty cool. So that's like my whole portfolio is an aristocrat, which is kind of interesting, but some of them don't pay dividends at the moment because they've been cut or suspended. So that's unfortunate. Uh, so I also have an X dividend date and pay date. And these I'm also using uh, import HTML uh, to get them from the TD Ameritrade website. Um, and then also I have a conditional where if the date is within the next week, then it's yellow. If it's within the next month, then it's red. And if the date is today, then it's gonna be green. So see, I have a lot of dividends coming up in September, so that'll be exciting. Um, and then this next column is just the beta, and that's just a measure of the volatility of the stock price. And um, you can see these two tickers here don't have a beta because they're fairly new. So there's not enough data to uh, put that in there. And then this is the weighted beta, which is uh, just the beta times the portfolio percentage, and I add that up to find the average weighted beta for the whole portfolio. Um, yeah, so that's about it for these. I have this filter here, 
along the top which basically filters all of them so I can change um, right now it's filtered by equity so it's sorted by how much equity I have so the one the stock with the least equity is at the top here and the one with the most is at the bottom here but I could change that to say the annual dividend paid and then I can see how that plays out there and currently Exxon is paying me the most dividends which is a little bit scary hopefully they don't cut but we'll see how that goes um, so I'll change it back to equity here because that's what I like normally um, and then right down here I just have a little it's called a gauge and it just tracks uh, from zero to a goal and right now that's just tracking the annual dividend income so my goal is a hundred dollars a year I guess so that's just giving me a little visual representation um, and then this chart here is a pie chart of the equity by the sector so I'm just selecting the data for the equity for each company and then the sector it's in and then it's adding it up and putting them all together so you can see my largest or my smallest uh, sector is materials with only three and a half percent and I think my largest is infotech with 14 and a half which is pretty cool because that's high growth hopefully so we'll see how that goes and then this last chart here is just dividend income by sector it's a pie chart it's pretty similar but instead of looking at the equity of each company I'm looking at the amount of income it's paying me uh, so that's just a different way to look at it um, and then lastly I just have some uh, little summaries here so I can get a quick look at some info so I have my portfolio value the income and then I've breaking it down by month day and hour which is just kind of cool to look at right now I'm not even making a whole penny every hour but that's fine hopefully it'll go up in the future um, and then I just have the day change which is just a summary of the day change of each company and then the dividend yield and then the PSR increasing dividends and beta right here um, so that's a general overview of this page and one thing I forgot to mention these columns here that are green that just means that I have to manually input that data so when I add a new company all I have to do is input the ticker the dividend frequency and the years of increasing dividends and then it should populate everything else for me which is pretty cool uh, so that's good to see so yeah that's pretty much it for this video um, I hope you enjoyed it I hope you learned some from it and uh, make sure to drop me a like below if you did enjoy it um, and don't forget to check out Pierre on YouTube uh, he has some really interesting stuff so I'll leave his link in the description I just want to leave you with this quote never give up great things take time that was said by Frank Zane and he was a bodybuilder in the 70s and he won the Mr. Olympia competition three times and it's really a reminder to all of us in the investing community that uh, you're not going to build a great portfolio or a super awesome portfolio in a really short period of time but you got to keep going slowly and steadily and eventually you'll get there so just keep that in mind and with that I'm going to wrap it up and I'll see you guys later thanks <laughs>